Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. What's going on, brother? Yeah, I'm good. Good. Still <laughs> you're hungry. Lying. <laughs> you're lying because you're fasting, and I know you're fasting. And I know Still you. hungry. Still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have quite the attention span uh, from you as I usually get. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm impressed with how much you're pushing through. Uh, guys, if you if you listen to the show for any length of time, Tim and I get together. We record a couple episodes. We talk in between them. Uh, so it's pretty funny. I hit the record button sometimes uh, <laughs> a little quicker than, than Tim may like uh, in the middle of a conversation. Uh, to get these going for you, but I can tell I can tell you're fading a little bit, brother. I can tell you're fading, so I appreciate. Well, he's all, almost time. five p.m. as well. To be fair, it's almost five p.m. I hear you. I hear you. It's uh, four and a half, but we'll talk about it. So, which is actually kind of interesting, Tim, that you're going through this fast, which means you eat your own cooking, right? You're eating your own cooking. You're eating what you're. <laughs> Less of the food analogies, okay? <laughs> I'm going to give a lot of food analogies in this one. <laughs> you're, you're doing, you're walking your walk, right? Ideally with a snack in hand. But you're walking your walk and you're making it happen, which is great. Which makes me think, and I ask this to all the guys, and I'm not asking this to you, Tim, but what if you had a film crew come into your life? Let's say they, they popped in right now. And they're going to do a documentary on you. And they're going to follow you around right now, right? And they're going to watch you for the next seven days, right? Seven days, they're going to document what you do. How would you change your behaviors, right? How would you change what you're doing? How would you change the way that you're interacting with people around you? How would you change the way you eat? How would you change the way you would stand? How would you change the way you do business? These are really interesting questions. Now, Go ahead and answer those. And if you're listening to this and you're not at the gym or something driving, pause that and answer those questions. Truly. Because the second question I really want to know is if that film crew showed up 30 days ago, what would they have seen? What kind of man would they have seen? Would they see a leader in their business? Would they see an ethical man in their business? Would they have seen a great father? Would they have seen an amazing husband? Or where they've seen a guy watching porn all the time, where they see a guy slacking off or a person cheating on deals, or where they see someone who's lazy, drinking too much, doing drugs, right? Or somebody hiding out and not doing the work that they say they want to do. And guys, it's, it's key to be honest here, right? It's key to be honest. And if anybody's like, hey, if they showed up and followed me around, it'd be perfect. I'd be so proud of it. You know, if my kids saw it 10 years from now, I'd be so proud of the man they'd see. <laughs> You're lying. Right? Because we all have faults. There's all little course corrections we'd make and be like, ah, 30 days ago. Ooh, yeah, I wasn't doing that thing that I didn't want anybody to know about. Or I didn't want to see me working from home in my boxers. Right? <laughs> or whatever it may be. Right? It could be subtle. It could be subtle. There's a lot of guys out there that are, that are kicking some butt. We have hundreds of men that have been through the program that are killing it out there in the world. You know, and most of those guys, probably I'm going to guess it's 90%. They'll be like, yeah, they could follow me around. 10%, nah, a few things here and there. Maybe I had some irritable bowel syndrome or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're eating that pizza, that delicious pizza that Amelia was <laughs> enjoying. <laughs> Trust. <laughs> Just what, I saw you drift off there for a Garlic second. Garlic and herb dip. Oh. So, I was just thinking um, about the question. Initially, when you asked, I thought, if a film crew followed me around for seven days, I think they'd be quite bored, quite honestly. Because I live such a simple, at least I think I do, uh, it feels like I do, uh, quite a simple day. To, every day is pretty much the same, which isn't necessarily a, a good thing, but it, yeah, I enjoy it. Um, I think one thing, if they would have showed up 30 days ago, I think one thing I do differently or to make more of an effort with if they showed up was to be nicer at times. Uh, Cause I feel like um, there's been times over the past 30 days where I've let myself get more stressed than I would usually than I'd like. Um, I'm not, I don't feel like I've taken it into the relationship. Um, at least it doesn't seem that way. We're still connected and obviously we work with the intimacy coach. So it'd come up 
on there, right? And it it hasn't. So I think I've done a good job with that. Um, I think I would maybe I maybe would have made an effort to work out at times when I didn't, or maybe work out harder at times when I didn't. I'd probably make an effort to be more, maybe a little bit more flirtatious. I mean, I'm very playful with Amelia. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm a, a million miles off from, there'll obviously be changes, right? I don't think there'll be major changes. And then when they left, I'd be like, fuck, I'm glad they've gone. <laughs> uh, but I think 30 days ago is pretty much, you know, very similar. I will share with them your voxers that you've sent out. <laughs> Stress, right? Yeah, exactly. You know. Well, that's what's interesting, right? So when I thought about this for myself, Tim, you know, and I encourage the guys, I'd love to hear your guys' input in the Facebook group. But what I thought about this for myself, I was like, okay, if, if they followed me around, would I be proud? Would I be happy with it? I'm like, yeah. And then I thought of the idea of would it would have my kids watching this 10, 20 years from now? Be like, wow, that's my dad. I thought, hmm, no, no, they wouldn't. They may be like, oh, that's great, but it wasn't extraordinary. It was not extraordinary behavior. But it depends, though, doesn't it, on what your standard is? Well, well, there's two things. I'm comparing it to my standard, not yours, oh, and not the listener bad. standards, but to my standard, it wasn't. Right? When I thought yeah, about this, I was great. sitting on the couch watching a documentary on barbecuing. Sorry, keep going. There was a delay, though. Couldn't mean to cut you up. No, 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 no problem at all. Yeah. Um, but so that was the idea, right? I thought about this. It popped in my head, and then I'm sitting on the couch, watching a documentary on barbecuing. Mm. It was like a reality TV show. And as you know, Tim, I got into you know, I got a smoker. I've gotten into it. I really love it. So it's fun. And I wasn't just judging myself for that moment, but I was thinking, huh? Am I? Is the life that I'm leading, is it extraordinary? Is it rising to or above my personal standards? Mm. And the answer came back to me, no, right? So it wouldn't be, yeah, it was a good, you know, I, I think, quite honestly, I think I exceed most people's standards per se in the average, you know, which isn't saying much. <laughs> but with what I want to do, the impact I want to make through the movement of the powerful man, right? The person that I want to lead to help men around the world, you know, to accomplish a lifestyle like yours, Tim, or like Arthur's or like Mark's or the other coaches that, and then hundreds of other men, the lifestyles that they've achieved, mm. right? Am I doing that? I was like, oh man, 20 years from now, if my kids were watching just let's say seven days, right? They're going to edit it out. It's going to be an hour. I was going through this whole mm. montage. They edited it out. What's going on? What are the highlights? What's the reels? You know, I chased a coyote in the woods you know, yesterday. Uh, you know, because it was near my house, so I just went after it, it was, <laughs> which is kind that, of fun. That reality, or is that what you said? Like, you were oh, like I really did it. Oh, yeah, I was oh. on a phone call uh, outside my house. As you know, I live right right next to the national forest. My wife was outside. She was also on the phone, different with a baby. And there was a coyote. It was small, wouldn't done anything. But I decided I didn't want the coyote to feel comfortable near my house, so I, I actually literally took <laughs> off after it. And the coyote was stopped, looked at me like, "What is going on?" <laughs> and uh, eventually took off running. So uh, I think one thing I would, I think excitement is probably the, the best word to describe what would be lacking from this seven day film crew, like film in my life. Hence it been quite similar. And, you know, we were talking before we got on the call, right. About um, making an effort with my own needs, making an effort with them for myself. And I just bought a tap and, the chair so I could go dip in and it's all things like that that I think would make it in my opinion add to little touches of extraordinary because you're going out of your comfort zone to make an effort to go and do things when it would be easy to say oh I'm tired or you know maybe I'm working or I'm working at you know just in the normal routine of things sure um so I'd probably say the things that would ma really make it extraordinary for me would be the excitement and spontaneity, excitement, spontaneity, and then uh, flirtatiousness. So they'd be the, the main ones. Which was interesting. And, and just as a caveat for the, for the people that aren't from the UK, dipping, Tim's talking about cold water plunging. Uh, <laughs> dipping in the States means something totally different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Funny. Funny. But, 
But um, yeah, I, I, I don't think this is something for me, at least this exercise isn't something that makes me say, oh, I need this excitement. It doesn't need to be an action movie where, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, right now I'm going to jump on my mountain bike That's and I'm with a, <laughs> with a spear and I'm going to go take that coyote down and barbecue it, right? You know, or something, you know, go hang gliding tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I don't think it needs to be that extreme. And I think there is, as you know, there's, there's some sexiness in routine, right? Because you're going towards a goal. So my kids said, my dad, my dad does his, you know, his alpha rise and shine. If they saw that, I think that sticks to, you know, walking the walk. And there's other things that go in there with business. But I think for me, right, the, the boxes that I want to check is that I'm always living with integrity and always choosing to take the right path, even when it's difficult, right? That's a box that I, I pretty think, I think I check 100% of the time. But there's other things, right? I skip a workout. Maybe I'll have an extra beer you know, or, or mm, enjoy that pizza, right? That delicious, yummy pizza, whatever it may be, you know, are those the things that are consistent with my values? Did I choose to do it? Right. And there's a difference, right? Pizza is an example uh, that you can choose to cheat on that meal. You can choose to, <laughs> to have, I know this break, is torture. To break you fast. <laughs> choose to break you fast. <laughs> you can choose to do it. And that's different. It's conscious. But a lot of us do things as we've talked about subconsciously, walking by the pantry, opening it up, grabbing a snack, right? Walking by my son as he's eating, right? He's eating his kid's snacks, which for any dad is like, is 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 just <laughs> so tempting to take your son. Oh, he didn't finish that. I'll, I'll finish that quesadilla. Um, <laughs> I don't want that to go to waste. But those are the kinds of things, right? If you had a movie crew watching you, filming you, and then it falls into something we're teaching in this, I'm going to be going over with the guys tomorrow on the sexual mastery course is, are you living your passion? Are you living your purpose? Are you or not? Or are you just talking about it? Mm. Uh, Someday I'm going to do this. Someday I'm going to take the program. Someday I'm going to come visit Doug and, and sisters, right? Or whatever. It's talking to you, Tim. So are you Mm -hmm. doing those things that allow you to move the needle in your life? Mm-hmm. Or are you in Groundhog's Day mode, right? Same complaints, same people, same pub, same bar, same mm-hmm. routine, but it's not a fulfilling routine. It's not fulfilling to you. And then I, I got to ask, like, and just feel this right now. Take a moment, literally, let's just take a couple seconds of silence. And I want everybody, including you, Tim, to think, of how would your day change if you knew, really change, if you knew a film crew was coming today? Would you dress differently? Would you carry yourself differently? Would you clean your house? Would you organize things in your house differently, in your, your office? Would you treat your, your spouse, your kids, your friends differently? Would you be a little nicer on the messages you send out? Would you communicate differently? you work out more, work out less, eat differently, go to sleep earlier, go to sleep later. Really curious to see because what this allows us to do, this exercise, is play in our mind with the person that we dream of becoming because that's really what we're trying to project out there. And as always, as men, we're going to fall short of that idealistic life on a permanent basis. But I think along with the other podcasts that we did, Tim, this gives you another milestone, another checkpoint to say, hmm, that's interesting. You know, right now, as you know, Tim, I'm redoing this office space. I'm, I'm redoing it by myself. You know, stuff everywhere. But right now, I'm, I would run around and clean this place up, organize it. <laughs> so why don't I do it anyway? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Now I can be an inquiry around that and figure it out. Is that a blockage in my energy? Is there an excuse there? Is there something else I'm making up? So I found this really interesting for me. That's why I wanted to share it with you and and the listeners. And I was literally right behind me. If anybody's watching the video, I have two other desks back there, six foot tables. And one of them I like to journal on. And I was journaling about this question. And I found it to be fascinating, especially rolling into the fourth quarter when I'm setting my goals and the things that I want to hit. I have these big lofty goals, as you know, I love to set, Tim, but at the same time, I started looking back like, wait a minute, 
if I would clean my office, why don't I always keep my office clean? Clearly, that's what I'd like to represent to the world. Why would I like to represent that? That's the first thing. Is that because my parents told me to clean my house when guests come? Or is that something I want? Is that really free my energy? Do I like it better when it's clean? The answer for me is, yeah, I do like it better when it's clean. I just don't like cleaning it. So then it becomes a discipline thing, right? So really interesting questions to go through. I'll just hire a cleaner. <laughs> you get the idea though. It's a cleaner, but I'm talking about organizing and everything else. And, you know, transparently Darcy comes in twice a week and helps me out with all of that. Darcy's kind of our right-hand woman that helps us out through a lot of our, the things that we work on. But point being, it's really the inquiry, right? That level of that thought process to go through. And it doesn't have to take a long time, guys, to go through this. Just notice where the first few things you thought of that you might change. Ah, you know, I might wear, I might dress up a little bit more. All right, we've seen that with guys that are going through the Powerful Man programs. We've talked to them about when COVID hit. Hey, dress up a little bit more when you're going to go to work, even though you're going to your, your bedroom or into the living room. Still dress up a little nicer. It's going to change the way you act, change the way you feel about yourself. Mm. Right? Don't wear sweats all, all day around your house and then expect your wife to you know, want to have sex with you at a drop of a hat. You know, you got to carry your own swagger. Mm -hmm. It helps you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's a great question. It's a great question. Yeah, good move. Well, thank you. Kudos. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, I invite you, you to do what we always <laughs> ask is take some action here, right? Write these questions down. Take a moment to really think about it and then share it. Share mm -hmm. it. Tim, I'll share mine with you and I'll share it with the other guys that are involved in the movement over there uh, as well as I answer this question. And guys, share it in the Facebook group. We have a community of over 2,000 men just like you who are all striving for better, right? All striving for the path. This is a movement of men movement of leaders that are coming through and it's just for you to show up all you have to do is show up and do the work all right gentlemen that's a wrap for us on another episode of the powerful man show as always go over to the powerfulman.com forward slash bonus and get a free training right there we do that for you so you can get started uh, and actually take some action there's no there's no cost to it the only cost is you putting in some sweat equity and actually doing the work yourself all right, guys, have a great week. We'll see you next time on The Powerful Man Show.